Hi, everybody. This is Seth Weissman, and welcome to another episode of Safe Real Estate. Today, we're going to talk about designated agency. And there's two key points I want to make sure that everyone understands. First of all, designated agency was created when Beretta was rewritten. And what Beretta basically says is, first of all, designated agency is not as a matter of state law, dual agency. And it is a situation where the broker assigns one of his or her licensees to exclusively represent the seller and another one of his licensees to exclusively represent the buyer. Now, what Beretta does talk about, which a lot of people forget, is it talks about the broker assigning the licensees to represent the two parties in the transaction. And what worries me is what happens in the real world is the broker rarely actually says, okay, Mary, you go represent buyer A and Chuck, you go represent seller B. What seems to happen is that the agents themselves work out between themselves that they are both going to be designated agents. And frankly, that troubles me a bit because the state law says the broker shall assign the licensees to act in this role. And what I think real estate brokerage firms need to do to be safe so first of all, if you can actually call your broker and get the broker to do a formal assignment, that's always preferable. But if the broker's busy or that doesn't work for whatever reason, I think the brokerage firm should write something into their office policies and procedures manual that basically says something like, whenever in our company, one agent is exclusively representing the buyer and another one of our agents is exclusively representing the seller, we designate that situation as a designated agency transaction. And unless we direct you otherwise in writing, you shall always be designated agents in that situation. The reason I strongly recommend that is if anyone ever challenges what your agency relationship was, or they say, you know what? There was never a formal assignment here. It must have been a dual agency transaction, therefore, not a designated agency transaction, you have some evidence where there was a global assignment of the designated agency roles. The second point I want to make about designated agency, and it really only applies to brokers, is a company's broker cannot be a designated agency. And the reason that the law was written that way is the idea was the broker would be kind of a neutral party in the middle, supervising the activities of both designated agents. And it's hard if the broker was actually one of the designated agents, it really would have been impossible for the broker to represent one of the parties while supervising another one of the parties. But the bottom line lesson for today is either get your broker to assign you as a designated agent or encourage your company to adopt a policy in its office policies and procedures manual. I hope this episode of Safe Real Estate has been beneficial. Please continue to tune in. As always, it's great to see you. Bye now.